So, she wrote the thing I did the What I'm the girl did. And that's it. The Spirit of God ready to deliver her. You know? Now, this, this is a real illustration, right? This is not just a, a fake illustration. Just, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put on a song where God is going to break every chain. Put it on right now. And you will be getting ready to get a real deliverance. And the church ushers among says they will come up and they will put you down and they'll say they step in the church. Sit up. Put the church on the corner. They put them in a place where nobody can see them. Right. You can't put them where everybody can see them. Because they're getting a deliverance. God is delivering them, right? Let's go around them. Let's have worship sound and you come to churches on. Yes, I feel like I all lost in it. Come on. Come on, come on. The whole floor is yours. Come on. Yeah, come on. Marissa, come, come, come. You do, come. Come, come. We're going to do two, two real illustrations. Let me show you the church system. Come on, fast. There is power. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. You are Andrew Carpenter. Break every chain, break every chain. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Let's see, let's see. You got the church Sunday morning and God ready to break the chain. Let's see what will happen. Hide them, 
You people need deliverance. Church system and Jesus system are two different systems. That is why Jesus always had a problem with the teachers of the law and the Pharisees. Because the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, they know a little too much until they know nothing. So you will find in the church system, there are plenty Pharisees. And the Pharisees can come from the leader of the church, go right back. Because they will say, look, watch out, these people, they get in delivered. Watch out, they get in on. This is not the way the church is supposed to be. The church is supposed to be, you come in the church, you hush him out, you stay very quiet, and they, they lock you down, like they put a lock tight in your mouth. You can't praise God. If you get up and you decide to dance, in the spirit, they say, no, we do not allow that in the church. So I wonder when Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And then sometimes people say, but we don't allow that in the church that we go to. But I have news for you. The church you go to, what do you don't allow? Is freedom. What you do allow is bondage. You see, the church belongs to Jesus. Bondage belongs to the devil. So if you don't allow freedom and you allow bondage, who you working for? Who you really working for? You working for the devil or you working for God? And I'm sure a lot of people is listening to me this morning on Facebook and they will see me on YouTube. That is why people will go to church for help. And sometimes the way they go, they leave the church worse than how they come in. Help them. Thank you, Jesus. That is so awesome. Look at her, still drunk. Put us along. Put us in there. They're still drunk under the anointing. They're still drunk under the Spirit of God. You see, people don't like reality. What they like is not with our, they like religiousness. They don't like reality being real between God and them. Everybody, if you like reality, when you come to church and you're ready to be real with God, and if anyone try to say, shut up, Stay quiet. Sit down. We don't allow this in this church. Those people, they want you to remain in bondage for the rest of your life. And then after you will go home or you will go meet your friends. And here in the next conversation, you will have, this is for the religious people. They will start talking about decency. Decency. We are not telling nobody when they come to church and the freedom coming, if they close shed, you know, where is that we don't want people to cover them and secure them. We are not telling people that. But at least you must be free to raise your feet, raise your hand, praise God. You must be free to open your mouth. Without any pharaohs, without any pharaohs in the church, lock it on. So when you come in church, you can make a smile from from your belly, out of your spirit. You cannot make a real smile. You can make a fake smile, a mannequin smile, like what you put up and you put for clothes. To advertise clothes and the mannequin always smiling, you can make that kind of smile. But God is coming back for people who is real. 
You know, Prophet Estelle now. She said every one of my messages that God give me to preach. But not my message, that God message. It means so I preach it. I am not about I, me, and mine, and self. I'm not that. She said, but me all the messages about teaching. So I told prophetess, how will they learn if you don't teach them? People can come to church, they worship God, they clap, they hear a good word, but you don't teach them. How will they learn? How will they learn? When Jesus told the 12 disciples, drop your net, Peter, James, and John, and everybody else, tax collectors, everybody, he said, follow me. What did he take them and he carried them to do? He took them and carried them to teach them. He teach them. He sat on a boat. He sat on the rock. He taught them. He taught them about the kingdom of heaven. He taught them about the poor. He taught them how you should treat. People, human being, what you should do. The do's and the don't. He told them. So the whole Bible is about teaching us. Like I always say, if you buy a car and if you have a manual, the manual is where they learn about the different stuff. So that is a manual for our life so that we will know the do's and the don'ts. We will know what to say and what not to say. We will know what call will be an angry banquet and what call will not be an angry banquet. The Bible is about teaching. Teaching. I don't know for you, but I want to believe from five years old when I started going to church. I didn't know how real Jesus was. I always saw Jesus as a, the Jesus in the pity and the almanac. I always saw it. But when I learned that when you go to church, a feelings come over you that I love. I learned that when I go to church, there was a presence about our church that was different from the presence of my home. My home, eh? not your home, my home. I learned that when I went, I wanted to go back there because I wanted more. I learned that. I learned that. Because I learn when I go, my spirit become excited. My soul become filled. My words start changing. My attitude no longer the old attitude. I learn that I become more and more hungry for God. Because I love Jesus so much. You see, it's not about the church system. Not about the church system. The church system is like if we know you will move up the chair, we will bring the iron chair and well it so you can move it. You can move. The chair can move. Hey, let me tell you something. The iron chair have nice cushions. Stand God for that. That's for people who want to take a good relax in church. church is not called to relax in a time like this. The church is called to rise up. To rise up. The church is called to rise up. And to be praying 24-7. The word of God said, pray without ceasing. 
peace in you. That is what the church is supposed to be like. But mankind, human being like myself, we change the whole system. We said, you know what? Dress good. You're supposed to dress good. Smell good. You're supposed to smell good. But when you come in church, don't sponge your makeup. When you start to worship God, take care of your sponge and wake up. Because you may sweat. I'm going to tell you something. It's not about the makeup on the outside. It's about the makeup of God making up your spirit on the inside. That is what it's about. Amen, everybody. I'm going to read the scripture that I just. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses the saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. I want to let you know that religiousness caused the salt in your life to be trampled. And you lose your saltiness for God. Because you are more concerned. You become more concerned. About how you look. And how the system is supposed to be. Than your relationship with God. I remember a long time ago. A very long time ago. When I finished training in America. New York and come back on throughout the islands I was offered to go and carry on the French churches my brother used to be the superintendent of the church so he had the authority to find a church for me to go and carry on and I went to the office I was there I don't know if prophetess was there I was there they offered me they wanted to give me a minister's license and they wanted to offer me a church with people in it, worshippers in it, everything. But I said no. I want to be led by the Spirit of God. Because you see, I don't want to take all my training and all my relationship with God. And when I do come back, Put myself in bondage. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to be led by the Spirit of God. I want to have my relationship with God so that men will not be able to fool them. And the same thing should go for you. Man, woman, whosoever, they should not be able to fool you. You should have that level of wisdom and knowledge. To know the difference from God and from the devil, the spirit of God and the spirit of the devil. You should come to that place when you have relationship with God, people. I want to let you know that religiousness and the system could contaminate you, could try you, could take all the virtue away from you. Let me tell you something. My Bible says, God ways is not man ways. And man ways is not God ways. That's what my Bible says. Check your Bible and see what it says. So when you're ready to go God way, you have to be led by the Spirit of God. And then you will never ever lose your saltiness. Sometimes people come to church and they start having a good relationship with God. 
they start their dream, they start getting vision, and all of a sudden, they lose it. And here what? They start running after money, they start running after materiality. Because even though they come and they start running after God, getting dreams and vision, is that saying that they do not lost for material possession in them? So the loss rise up now and start running after the material things of this world. And what it costs a man to gain the whole world and lose your own soul. When you see them, you ask them, you have a dream? When I say a dream? I can't remember. I don't know. When you tell them share a dream, they never had a dream. But all the time before, they had plenty dreams. Because you know what? They exchange the salt and the light that Jesus put in them. For what? For the lust of this world. But I want to let the church know we are living in a time like this. Tell you got us. Thank God for material things, thank God for it. But don't ever exchange material things for God. You see, sometimes in our spirit, material things occupy so much in our spirit. It hardly have room for God in our spirit. That is why this morning I read the scripture in Proverbs. One who like correction, like knowledge. One who don't like correction is stupid. There's no other word. There is no other word. No other word. So I want to give God praise, honor, and all the glory this morning. For He's a good God. I'm going to ask you something. When we were living, home together with our parents and our parents ever correct us and I'm sure our parents correct us did you benefit from it yes or no did you benefit from it I benefit I benefit a whole lot because I was not stupid did not receive the correction I receive the correction and if I were stupid at that time I'll become intelligent at this time so I want to thank God I want to thank God so much I want to thank God so much and I want to thank God for all the children all the adults that listen how will they know if you don't preach to them. I want to thank God for those that listen. And listen, when people listen, you would know if they like correction, so you would know if they would get wisdom. You know how you'll know it by the actions. And how you will know the stupid ones by the action. Because they don't like correction. But you know what? With God, those that like correction will go forward. Those that do not like correction, they will go backward. They will not be a hindrance in God's work. I want to thank God. I want to thank God so much. I want to thank God for wisdom. I want to thank God. If we don't have wisdom in a time like now, we would perish, people. We would perish. If we don't have wisdom, the soul that God placed in us, the desire, it will perish. God is good. God is good. To the church this morning, I want to thank God for every one of you. When I look around, I see the one that like wisdom, the one that like correction. You will become more and more intelligent. I see it. Nobody have to tell me. Don't come and tell me. I don't want to know. I see it. 
actions speak louder than words. And I feel so good. I feel so good. God, just do what you have to do. Because I, you know, I know that God wants to bring some changes. God wants to refresh people's mind. God wants to bring us into a better place with Him. And I thank God so much. Okay? Let me tell you something. If you follow stupid people, you will be stupid as well. Jesus was a very intelligent man and still. So the 12 disciples, they followed Jesus. And I want to thank God today. All of us, including everybody here, we are following Jesus today. That is why we read his word and we act upon his word. I want to thank God so much for this beautiful morning. I want to thank God for everybody that's here. I just want to call Nicole. Nicole, come please. Come Nicole, bring yourself. Come, come boy.